Welcome to Talk the Walk podcast. I'm Janie Morris and it's great to have your company and today we have a very special guest because today, uh, actually yesterday, I, it was brought to my attention that there's currently a bill before the South Australian Parliament that has been sort of kicking around for I guess over 25 years really and I felt that it was really important that we get a little bit more insight on this particular bill and what it means for our community and uh, perhaps bust a few myths and get a little bit more clarity. And what I'm talking about is the voluntary assisted uh, dying uh, bill that uh, is currently, as I said, before the South Australian uh, government. Now, as debate continues, on the voluntary assisted dying bill in state parliament. New research has actually shown that 80% of South Australians support choice and compassion for people with an incurable illness. The voluntary assisted dying South Australia spokesperson is Lainey Anderson. And she says that polling carried out in early March of um, uh, 2021 reinforces continuing and overwhelming support among South Australians for voluntary assisted dying to be legalised. So I've invited Lainey on to talk the walk today. Now Lainey's an author, she's a journalist, she's a speaker, um, she's a mum, she's the, since 2007 she has been the weekly columnist in the Adelaide Sunday Mail. She started out her career in Mildura and then that took her over to London. She came back to Melbourne and worked with the Herald Sun for quite some time. She also found some time to be a PR manager for for South Australian Tourism Commission. And gosh, you've got some time for me today. Welcome, Lainey. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Janie. I really love, really love being here. Thank you. No, you're more than welcome. Now, Lainey, can you give us a little bit of background on the Voluntary Assisted Dying Bill? Yes, yeah, so this is a bill that was introduced um, as a private member's bill by Kayan Ma, Labor Upper House MLC, um, a couple of years ago. And Kayam, like many of us, feels very passionately about this after uh, seeing his uh, mother die in um, lots of pain and um, just wants to make life, um, make, make the process of dying more compassionate um, and offer more choice here in South Australia as a result of that. Um, this bill really importantly and why it differs so much from everything else that's come before 17 bills we've had in the state parliament in the, in the last quarter of a century what's different about this one is that it mirrors exactly victorian legislation which became law a couple of years ago and has actually been in practice for 18 months so we have 18 months of actually seeing it roll out with uh, six monthly uh, reviews and reports that are done by a, a very large group over in Victoria led by a former Supreme Court judge in Betty King. So what we've seen is it, with 68 safeguards and very strict criteria for eligibility for voluntary assisted dying under this legislation, um, we're seeing that it's viewed particularly by legislators, you know, MPs who feel a heightened sense of responsibility to look after every member of the community. Um, we're seeing that they believe it to be much more workable, much more credible, and something that they can support more than other bills which were much looser in their eligibility. So in we've seen the Victorian um, legislation has come into force, which is fantastic. We've also seen in Western Australia last year, um, legislation has passed. And so by the middle of the year, with Victoria and WA both having um, this law in place, it will mean a third of the Australian population will have access to voluntary assisted dying, which has been quite a momentum shift, a paradigm shift really um, in the last few years. And just in the last month, both chambers of the Tasmanian Parliament have now also passed legislation. So by the end of the year, um, it's, it's imminent in, in Tasmania as well. And up in Queensland, the Palaszczuk government, which obviously has majority in the lower house, and there is no upper house in Queensland, 
they are committed to introducing this legislation and the Queensland Law Reform Commission is currently just um, teasing out the Victorian legislation to make it applicable for a state like Queensland where it's uh, much more, you've got much more diversity of population centres. You know, you've got much more people living in regional areas and away from metropolitan uh, Brisbane where the, you know, the cent centralised medical system is. So they're just taking a look at it in that respect. So there really is a national uh, shift towards acceptance that Australians should have access to voluntary assisted dying laws. And this new bill is a part of that, which um, makes it very different to what we've seen before. It's understandable that for ever since, as you say, like this all started uh, probably about 25, 26 years ago, it's understandable within the community that there are and have been concerns around this and, and um, because it's, it's, it's controversial mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in many, many ways. Can you help give us a little bit of insight as to... Um, some of those fears and how, how this new legislation is actually working through that so that the um, safeguards that are in place uh, are working and, and, don't, and the fears that the community have about people using this in the wrong way, I guess, is yep, the prime sure. fear, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so the, the bill, as you said, is, and as I said, is, is quite different to what we've seen before. And those 68 safeguards, the key ones are that the person in, in Victoria, the doctor can't even, even though it's legal, the doctor can't even suggest voluntary assisted dying to you. So a person has to approach their doctor about this. Now that person has to be deemed by two medical specialists to be suffering from an incurable illness um, and facing death within six months, in most cases, if it's cancer or heart disease or something like that. In the cases of neurodegenerative diseases, it's 12 months. So that is a very strict eligibility clause right there. Um, suffering from a mental illness and suffering from a dis oh, or having a disability that you feel um, doesn't makes life not worth living if that's how you very sadly feel that is not eligibility so that's that the very they're very strict about that you have to be um, determined to be capable of making your own decision and if one of the two medical specialists believe that you're not you will be referred to a, a, a third specialist who can uh, verify whether you are or, or can, can or cannot uh, make this decision of sound mind. Um, yeah, it has to be a voluntary request and it crucially has to be witnessed by two independent witnesses. One can be a member of your family, but neither can be beneficiaries of in any way of your, your passing and nor can they work in an institution where you might live like an aged care home. So that idea that somehow you could be forced into doing this by people who stand to benefit, um, very, very special care has been taken to make sure that that isn't possible. Um, yes, as I said, you have to be experiencing tolerable suffering that cannot be relieved. And um, yeah, you, you have to make three requests as well over a period of time. So it can't just be, you can't just walk into your GP and say, I'd like um, to, to, to access voluntary assisted dying. There's three requests made with um, no less in, in no less than 10 days. In Victoria, the situation, most people are averaging about 70, 71 years old, I believe it is, but some are a bit younger but, and some are older. Um, and what's happening is they, uh, they go through a pr the process of getting the, the medical specialists. The, the doctors also need to be registered and doctors have a right to conscientiously object to being a part of the process, which I think is really important as well. This is all about choice. 
no one who doesn't want to access voluntary assisted dying has to. No one wants to be part of the process, needs to be a part of it either. So um, if you go in and ask um, for your doctor as, as what's happening in, in Victoria, often they'll go through a process which might take, say, 30 days to for, for all of these checks and balances to take place with constant reporting to a, a state secretariat um, from the very first time the, um, the doctor um, reports that, that they've been approached. The doctor has to get be trained. You can't, any old GP can't, um, not that I don't love GP. <laughs> <laughs> um, never met a GP lacking in compassion or integrity, but um, they have to be trained in voluntary assisted dying. And so what happens is often the person will go through the process and then it might, and they receive a permit, but then it might take a couple, they might, you know, live their lives happily knowing that they have this waiting to go. So they might spend another couple of months until things really get to a point where they've just cannot the pain anymore or they feel like their their uh, mental capacity with the neurodegenerative disease is getting to such a stage where they will actually make the use of the of the permit so you can see the the safeguards really are strict and they the very best medical clinicians lawyers palliative care specialists around australia have applied themselves to this legislation so that all of the issues that have come before and the concerns are all really tackled in a in a really professional and a really safe way, which is fantastic. It it must have um, it must have really buoyed you, Lainey, when uh, with that um, the recent research that came out that eighty percent of South Australians actually support choice and uh, and compassion for people with an incurable illness, and in that. Uh, voluntary assisted dying uh, processes because because there's a lot of I know I know you've got a personal story and I've I've got my story as well with with my family mm. um, I, I think that, I often think that that's the part of the conversation that's not really brought up when we're having the broader conversation about voluntary assisted dying don't you think yeah it can actually it can sort of get quite process driven when really at the heart of it, it's about people and, and families and wanting to, to end their lives in a way that they've lived it, you know, surrounded by loved ones, surrounded by family and friends at a time of their choosing. And that's what we all, surely that's what we all want. That's what we want for ourselves. That's what we want for our loved ones. That's what I would have wanted for my beautiful dad. Um, who was a, a really a staunch supporter of um, voluntary assisted dying when he um, passed away in 2009 after three months that he really didn't want. You know, he, he reached the big age of 70 that he was aiming for in the May and I reckon if he could have just said goodbye that night, he would have been a happy man, but he it, um, went on until August and deteriorated um, in a in a really bad way, but I try I try not to to think it's about my experience. Like I I signed up to or volunteered to help the voluntary assisted dying team because I feel like they have just been absolute warriors, just tenaciously pushing away at this for so long now that if I can do anything to help them, then I, I wanted to do that. And the 80% the support is interesting because it's actually only 9% who are against it. So it could be up to 91 because there's about 11 that just are undecided yet. And that I'm sure if they learn more about the safeguards that are in place, that um, more, of, more of those undecideds would lean towards um, they're supporting it so that's an, an overwhelming number and the fact that 71 percent of south australians who um, identify as religious i think is really important as well because you know they can see that 
it's it, this is about choice it's about compassion and yeah I, I think I think that's really significant as well interestingly as well Jane the SAPOL the South Australian Police have for the very first time as part of a com, um, the end of life choices committee that ran it in parliament last year they have supported for the first time a legislative scheme that would allow for a person to die with dignity and under, and under proper medical supervision and that's because in in part because of the um tragically the number of suicides that their frontline workers um find uh, or have to go out and attend to with and i didn't know this before i started um researching um the background of it a bit more that men over 85 in Australia are the um, have the highest rate of suicide. Is that um, right? Yeah. No, I didn't yeah. know that either. Yeah, which is so sad. Yes. And if, can, if that's because of incurable illness and intolerable pain, if we can help some of those people to die surrounded by loved ones instead of in awful circumstances on their own, that, that will be a beautiful thing. That in and of itself is mm. is is one of the major benefits now that it did, like I didn't even realize that as well. But even as you were saying it, it makes sense, doesn't it? Because uh, it, it it makes sense that um, uh, as far as suicide is concerned, you know, if you're if, well, it doesn't even matter if you're if not. I don't mean to say it like that. It doesn't not matter that what age you are, but if you are going through. If you know, if you're going through intolerable pain and you know that you're terminal and and you don't have access to, as you say, something as, as incredibly supportive as this is on a, on a massive compassionate level, then suicide probably would be contemplated. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and as you say, and, and you're not with your loved ones. You're not with, it, it's not, it's not, it's not writing the last chapter your way, is it? No, exactly. I mean, yeah, absolutely. And if, mm. if we can if we can change that and get this um, voluntary assisted dying bill passed through Parliament, it would just be such a fantastic thing. I think so many people would be relieved to know that it's there, down way down the track, and just put so many um, minds at rest. So. Uh, when I've written about this in the past in my Sun and Mail column, I've often had people come up and talk to me about their husband who's going through, you know, had cancer and is in a really bad way and they wish they could do more for them. And particularly men who feel an awful burden for their wives that they can't help. Mm. And, yeah, if, if we could just make this accessible for people of South Australia like it's going to be accessible by mid-year for a third of Australians then, yeah, this, this will be a really positive um, social change for the state. Well, it looks like it's heading in that right direction. No, don't tempt fate. Let's touch wood. Lainey, <laughs> <laughs> Lain, if, if, if our listeners want to learn more about voluntary assisted dying uh, and find out more in particular about what's happening here in South Australia, what, where can they get that information from? If, if they want to learn more, um, the Voluntary Assisted Dying South Australia website has got lots of brilliant information. The, the Voluntary Assisted Dying Volunteer Organisation is just amazing. I, I've loved getting to know them. And that website is um, www.vadsa.org.au. And if people are really supportive without needing to know more, I would urge them to contact their local MP and, in fact, all Upper House MPs if they want to ring um, Parliament House on um, North Terrace and say, I'd like to send a message to all Upper House MPs because it's going through the Legislative Council first. Yeah, if anyone can send a message of support uh, by, I, either by email or phone, that would be really fantastic. Uh, we will have all those details uh, down below, wherever you are listening to this podcast right now. Uh, just check out all the links below and everything that Lainey just said will make sure is there for you. Lainey, I can't let you go without changing the subject a little bit. <laughs> sure. <laughs> now, as I mentioned at the beginning of our podcast today, Lainey is a, um, she's an award winner. 
this woman. And uh, we're very honoured to have her here because her book that she released uh, a couple, two years ago now? Long yeah, 2019. It's mm. gone where did last year go? Really? I, <laughs> I don't know. We were all so busy last year, Lainey. Um, <laughs> Long Flight Home, absolute brilliant book. Can you, before I let you go, can you just give our listeners a little bit of an insight and where they can get a copy of this incredible story and the journey that you were on um, uh, to write this book? It's amazing. Oh, you're such a love. Thank you very much. So normally my talks on this go for an hour, but I won't bore your listeners that long. <laughs> So um, this is the story of the Great Air Race from England to Australia in 1919, which was won by South Australia's very own brothers, Sir Ross and Sir Keith Smith, and their two mechanics, Wally Shires and Jim Bennett. So I got obsessed with this story in 2009 after a Sunday Mail reader contacted me and asked me to write about the Vickers Vimy out at the airport because the uh, the terminal had moved to its swanky new location, but the... Um, the plane was still in its 1950s hangar, now in the long-term car park. So that sort of set me on this amazing journey um, where over the years people just kept contacting me about it and we had different little committees formed and all sorts. Someone suggested I get a Churchill Fellowship or apply for one and I was lucky enough to travel overseas in 2017 and um, started researching, thinking as a journal I'd probably write a non-fiction book, but um, when I realised that one of the mechanics, Wally Shires, who lived into the 60s, um, into his 80s, and was this amazing raconteur who used to sit in the Hilton Hotel telling everyone about the story, um, I decided when I heard that um, he was actually engaged to a sweetheart before he went off to war um, just ahead of this great air race in 1919, I thought, let's write this as an adventure story for girls and a romance for boys. So Long Flight Home sort of was born out of that and it's just this, I just tried to write the kind of book that I would want to read about a, an air race in 1919 with open cockpits, no airfields after India and it's just, a, yeah, it's, I do get wonderful feedback about it. I'm really, I'm so thrilled that Wally's story it like touches so many people. And yeah, so Long Flight Home, the wonderful team at Wakefield Press published it. You can get it from their um, book um, shop in um, Rose Street. I want to say, I'm going to say Mile End, but I'm, I'm thinking it's Mile End, but Wait Wakefield Press anyway, you can Google where they are. But also lots of bookstores in, uh, in Adelaide and South Australia stock it too. So if they don't have it in, they will always order it in for you. Yeah, and my website, my website as well is laneyanderson.com.au. And all of those details, again, will be below where you are listening to this podcast right now. I can't recommend this book enough. It is exactly what Laney just said as well. Um, you know, it's a perfect book for girls and guys and it's just it's such a great read and what a great backstory I'm looking in fact you know what Lainey I think we'll have to have you on the podcast at another time just talking about this book because it, it it has got oh, a great, great great backstory but look for for the moment thank you again for giving us of your time and and giving our listeners a little bit more background and insight on voluntary assisted dying and uh, also hopefully um, to get this bill through and the legislation through um, here in South Australia and, and add to the common sense of uh, all the other states that currently have that as well. Lainey, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for your time. Really Lainey, thank you. It. Thank I really you. enjoyed it. Thank you. <laughs> you are welcome. And if you've enjoyed listening to this podcast as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you, um, or if you've got a question for Lainey, you can comment below. Don't, remember to like and, and share our podcast with others, uh, especially on topics such like uh, that we've been discussing today with Lainey, because that's what Talk the Walk is all about. And uh, so we look forward to having your company when next I bring you some more interesting guests, great topics and things that you have been asking us to talk about. I'm Janie Morris. This is Talk the Walk. And uh, we look forward to having your company next time.